Jesus. And it's the only reason I came back today. And, uh, well, because I, you know, I needed to talk to the skipper. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me back. Well, there are so many things going on, so many things happening that uh, we we needed to talk again. So uh, first off, um, last week you had uh, not an unexpected arrival, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Every year we uh, we do get uh, the uh, the world famous Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron does conduct its winter training out here every year in, uh, in the Imperial Valley and at, at NAFL Centro. And we were honored to have Captain Kesselring and the entire Blue Angels team uh, join us once again for their 2022 uh, winter training season. So they landed safely and they're already getting after it. You can hear them uh, and see them uh, uh, getting, uh, starting their training program. Okay. And, you know, it's to me, it's always fun to watch these guys. And, uh, I, I mean, they're, they are – flight athletes yeah they absolutely are it's uh, it's physically demanding uh and as much respect as i have for the other services flight demonstration teams uh our guys do it without the support of a what's called a g suit which is a suit that you wear uh that helps you uh, manage additional g stress load when you're flying and they and the reason the uh, the blue angels uh, are the only ones that do it without it uh, is it gives them a little bit more freedom of maneuver with uh, uh, very minute controls of the stick and rudder. And uh, it frees that up in the cockpit, uh, allows them to fly a little bit tighter, a little bit closer uh, than the other uh, units do. And it gives you just, just a little bit better show. But it is physically demanding uh, on the pilots, uh, and, they, uh, and, and they take a great pride in, in what they do and how well they do it. And uh, last year, you uh, you went up with them, didn't you? I, I did. I got an opportunity. Uh, I was honored to uh, to go fly with number four in the slot, which is the uh, the back of the diamond. Uh, I spent about uh, half the time upside down doing different things, which was uh, pretty cool. <laughs> what I found, I went up with them a number of years ago, and we flew out over parts of the desert that I had uh, uh, ridden over on a, a big Kawasaki dirt bike. And it sure looks different, you know, at uh, about 500 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, sure does. Now they they uh, they use the overhead the base uh, to do uh, practice, uh, and also they uh, they go out to our, uh, our Navy training ranges and use some of the airspace out there uh, to give themselves a different look. But uh, you can see them from from many areas. What what I would ask everybody is, is stay in the approved. Uh, recreation areas and don't uh, trespass onto the federal land uh, for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is your own personal safety. Um, just trying to get a better look at uh, what's going on out there. I ask you just to please stay off of those, uh, stay in the approved recreation areas and, and have a good time doing that. Okay. Now, of course, the Blue Angels, um, they're, they're the headliners, <laughs> you know, uh, but there are so many other things going on. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I've seen uh, a big C-130 um, flying around, and that's not highly unusual. Uh, have you got somebody in training with that? Well, we've got uh, out at the base, um, you know, as part of the Blue Angels uh, squadron, there is a, a C-130 that's painted blue and gold, just just like the other jets. Uh, and that is a relatively new platform. It, uh, it only arrived last year, uh, and uh, they, that was the first season with the new model uh, of Fat Albert. Uh, and that's uh, back this year as well, and you'll see uh, you'll see Fat Albert flying around the skies as well. But we also have gray C-130s uh, that have been visiting us recently, uh, both from the Air Force doing uh, cargo lift and moving people and personnel around the country to do different things or to do uh, support and special operations training uh, with uh, different parts of Navy Special Warfare or uh, Special Operations Command. So a lot of different types of training events happen uh, with the C-130 being a pretty versatile platform. Okay. And uh, what else is going on at, uh, at the base? Uh, you're always busy. Yeah, we are, we are, and I think busy is the uh, is the operative word there. Uh, so if I could take a second and just just kind of walk through what uh, what the men and women uh, out at El Centro accomplished in 2021, uh, Chief of Naval Aviation and Training. That's our, our our student pilots that are in various pipelines to fly different types of aircraft. 1,042 pilots, new pilots, were were, were winged last year uh, by Sinatra, and over 600 of those touched El Centro at one point in their training time. So we are a critical and irreplaceable role in generating new pilots. And where do new pilots go? They go out to the fleet, join those squadrons, embark on those aircraft carriers, and deploy around the world uh, to 
do the Navy and the nation's business uh, wherever they're called. Uh, so El Centro continues to provide a key linkage uh, to what, uh, what the Navy does uh, all over the planet. Um, and we support the entire Navy av aviation enterprise, as we call it, which means not just strike fighter, but helicopters, uh, Marine Corps aircraft that come in and out you see all the time. Uh, so that was happening all throughout the year. Uh, and we, we continue to re, uh, maintain a critical relationship with our NATO alliance partners as well as key key partners around the world. Uh, and we, the United Kingdom sent a detachment out for They were here for about six months last year uh, doing various training events uh, before they went to Afghanistan or national missions uh, for the UK uh, throughout the African continent. And why do they come here? Uh, they come here because it's one of the only places in the world that you can get high altitude mountain terrain uh, coupled with desert and, and uh, landing in, uh, in sand and dust conditions, uh, which our, our helicopters train to as well. So uh, they come here and, uh, and the Valley provides a, a critical link in their training program as well. Uh, and then some new things that we got, we got started. Uh, the MQ-8 Fire Scout is an unmanned, remotely piloted helicopter. And we did the first ever testing and, and flight operations of that asset uh, last fall. And uh, you're going to see that flying around a little bit more. Uh, uh, and it's going to be doing some work over the ranges as well uh, as that asset is beginning to deploy around the world uh, to do different types of things. Uh, but unmanned systems, you've heard drones, you've heard or remotely piloted aircraft, got a bunch of different names. Uh, but uh, the Navy unmanned systems are, are now coming out to El Centro uh, in small steps as, uh, as the Navy gets its foot underneath um, what the future war fight will look like. Uh, now, are these uh, these aircraft, the uh, the drones, are they uh, are they big or are they like the little ones that you see flying around the park? Yeah, the ones I'm talking about are are, are civilian helicopters that have been militarized, and then um, you know the, uh, the the flight controls have been taken out, the uh, and, and the, some of the you know the back seats have been taken out, uh, replaced with sensor packages, replaced with um, uh, remote controls, and then they we fly them from a control station. Uh, that's at the base and they fly, you know, wherever the, wherever the helicopter goes. So there's nobody on board uh, and it's, um, it's a pretty cool thing to watch, but it's the size of a small civilian helicopter. So pretty, pretty good size. Okay. We'll have to look for that. Yeah. You won't be able to tell that there's nobody in the pilot. You, you absolutely see. won't. The only thing you'll see is the windshields are painted over and that, that's really the only difference <laughs> uh, between some of the other helicopters we have. Okay. And we've restarted our joint drills. So we were very happy to host El Centro SWAT uh, to come out to the base and do a, a integrated drill with, uh, with our, our security team uh, uh, and to do an active shooter training. Uh, very important. It's an unfortunate situation that we all have to be prepared for. And the linkage with uh, with our local law enforcement team is, has been uh, been great. And we're looking to expand that uh, as we as we work our way out of uh, COVID mitigations and restrictions. Uh, and two big things we did last year, real big ones. Uh, the virtual air show, the first ever, fe ever festival of flight. Uh, we couldn't have the community tried to bring the base to everybody and uh, KXR Radio was a huge part in our success for that so we thank you and your team here uh, for our first ever Festival of Flight virtual air show last year uh, and then we celebrated our diamond anniversary the base turned 75 last year which was a, a pretty cool thing to celebrate um, honored cartoonist Jeff Bacon uh, gave us a, a very memor a memorable uh, cartoon uh, about the base uh, he's, a, he's a Navy cartoonist and, and if, you, if you know his work uh, it's pretty funny uh, it anecdotes about Navy life and whatnot. And the result of all the hard work that the men and women who work on the base there, we were selected as the Navy Region Southwest, which is this part of the country, the Insulation Excellence Award winner for small bases uh, last year. And we're competing at the national level right now. Uh, so we should find out uh, pretty soon uh, how that went. But I just couldn't be more proud of everything we did last year. Uh, and the key takeaway is we did more events. We, we, we flew more things. We did 32,150 flight operations, which is takeoffs, landings, uh, aircraft transvis transiting our airspace, uh, which is more than we did the year before COVID. So we've been working hard. We're working safely uh, and uh, keeping the Navy's mission uh, online. So uh, couldn't be more proud of what the folks are doing here. Okay. And I noticed one other thing, and I, I'm not sure about this uh, how it's going to continue, but uh, the Navy League uh, started back. We were honored to to restart it. Uh, we found a way to do it safely. We're doing it in small numbers, uh, but we're honored to to, to uh, support the Navy League with their uh, their monthly uh, their meeting. 
Uh, and um, you know, we're just going to keep watching it as it as it goes month by month to make sure that each event we do on base uh, is done safely in accordance with uh, COVID protocols. Uh, but we're trying to work our way out of this and and uh, and, uh, and get past it, uh, get past it safely, and get back to life as normal uh, as we're able to. Okay, and uh, just to be clear, uh, we are looking at a festival of flight again. Yeah, we absolutely are. Well, I'm doing everything I can to to do a, a, a as close to a, a full live event. Uh, as um, as current conditions allow, um, so more details will will come once I've had a chance to assess where we're going to be in March uh, with COVID. But March 12th is the date of the event, uh, and we're going to do something. and uh, And if the numbers support, we're going to do a live event, and uh, and that's uh, that's what we're we're still planning toward. Okay, and and trust me, I understand. Um, everything is fluid. Yeah, sure is. Um, you know, if you if you listen to some of the CDC updates and uh, both the state and local level uh, on the policy changes they're making, we're, we're we're doing the same thing. We're taking a look at what's the right thing to do. How can we do? It, how can we do it safely? Um, and then uh, and then we'll put some mitigations in place uh, as appropriate based on the conditions. Okay. Did I miss anything? No, sir. Thanks very much for giving me the time. I just wanted to to highlight all the great work that everybody who works out at the base has been doing uh, and how much we cherish being partners uh, with everybody here in the Valley. Well, I, I know I've shared with you during my, uh, my brief stint in the U.S. Army, um, <laughs> we were not allowed off base in uniform. And, uh, you know, we're not treated uh, very kindly pretty much anywhere I was stationed. And it wasn't just me uh, <laughs> because Lord knows I, you know, could have done enough things to be not treated kindly. But the uh, Imperial Valley embraces NAFL Centro and the personnel there. Yeah, we're, we're very proud of that relationship. And uh, we want to make sure we're doing our part as well uh, because we, we truly cherish uh, what the community us, uh, how they treat us, and and uh, how they support us or with everything that we try to get done. Okay. Captain William Perkins, we appreciate the visit, and uh, we wish you uh, well, good success. Uh, thanks very much, sir. I'd like to come back in uh, in middle of February, uh, if you don't mind, and uh, I'll give everyone an update on what the festival is going to look like, because uh, I should have made that decision by then. Okay. Thank you. All right. Take care. It's like a trip through time. The Imperial Valley's best oldies on the radio. Don't you know?